What's good, Waves and World? It's your boy Five Star in Vegas, broadcasting live as always from beautiful Summit in Nevada. And here with my co host, my guy, the only Sacramento Kings fan that I know. What's good, Spreader Star? How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. We beat the Spurs, man. That's not a big deal for most teams, but for a team that struggles uh, yeah. against cr- crappy teams, that was like a big game for me because I was like, we have, you know, it's like a must win game, even though it's the worst team in the league. So, uh, in a great mood today. Happy to break down some sports with you guys. Yeah, I had them first half minus four. They covered that pretty easily. I've been right. You know, the Kings now, since you my boy and stuff, they're my de facto team. I, I go to them like <laughs> since, the, since my Rockets suck. And this is how bad my Rockets suck. Yesterday on my card with the Supreme clientele, we went eight and one. <laughs> Guess what the only game we lost? The Rockets first half against OKC. Every time I fade the Rockets, they come out and look like the uh, freaking 97 Bulls and stuff. So... You know, it just happens, man. They didn't have anybody in. But as I told you preseason, Terry Easton is a guy. And he needs to get more minutes. Um, when You notice when the Rockets play ball, and without guys who are worried about their numbers, like we know that KPJ and Jalen are, they take bad shots, low IQ, and are worried about numbers. That AAU-style basketball isn't winning basketball. And the Rockets always play a lot better when those guys aren't in the lineup, unfortunately. So I don't know what. Uh, needs to be done by the coaching staff to get that uh, mentality changed over there, but they need to do a little uh, some things different because they play a lot more uh, winning basketball with Tate. Um, they have KJ Martin in the lineup. They have Tate in the lineup. That's they play winning basketball. You got Alper. He doesn't play a lot of D, but he makes smart decisions on offense, which makes their offense a lot more efficient. So. Um, good job by the Rockets last night. Y'all messed up a perfect night, but it's okay because you're my squad. You know so. Uh, let's talk a little bit about last week, man. We, you know, hey, man, the dream for the Bengals comes to an end, but we're able to make a little money. Let's get it fast. Yeah, let's go for the pass. But let's start with the first game. Uh, the 49ers fall short. The game wasn't close. Yeah. Nope. Um, you know, hey, uh, Shanahan's great at getting guys five yards open, but I don't see anyone giving him uh, any flack for trying to block a guy with 16 sacks with a backup tight end. Uh, yeah. These guys, hey, I know Shanahan and McDaniels are great, but are we noticing their quarterbacks keep getting knocked out? Right. Yep. Uh, maybe we need a little more pass protection there, and I think that ruined the game. So uh, Philadelphia Eagles move on, and was was a fairly straightforward result. The Eagles for the Super Bowl. I researched every week who uh, the Eagles faced at quarterback. They they they've had it pretty easy, man. The only two quarterbacks that they faced that were decent were Dak and Aaron Rodgers. Dak put up forty on them. Aaron Rodgers dropped thirty three on them. So keep that in mind heading into the Super Bowl. They have not faced a quarterback like Mahomes. Uh, so I think that their number one passing uh, defense rating is kind of tainted. But um, what I took from the game, it went just like I expected. One of my bigger bets of the year, me and the clients were on the Eagles first quarter, first half, and the game. I don't even think if Brock Purdy doesn't get hurt um, that the game's that much more competitive simply because um, they were having problems blocking the, the front four for the Eagles. Uh, I posted a picture on in, on um, Twitter uh, showing the Eagles lining up literally like it was 1930 a couple times <laughs> against the Niners with everybody on the line. They just went big. They put all the backs behind uh, Jalen Hurts to said, see if you can stop this quarterback that's uh, squatting 600 pounds in this offensive line. And they literally kicked the Niners' rears in the um, – line of scrimmage and you rarely see that with the Niners um the Eagles are definitely the more the most physical team right now in the NFL and they proved that against the 49ers like I said it was unfortunate what happened to Purdy I could tell he was hurt but he didn't want any smoke if he wasn't hurt uh, just a crazy environment to go into as a rookie uh playing that type of game and I can't wait to see my guy Trent Williams in the offseason in Houston and, and mess with him about how he yanked that guy and pulled him down and slammed him. <laughs> I can't wait to poke him about that. But uh yeah, man, the uh Eagles, the Eagles uh did what we thought they were doing and you know, they ran through the Niners. The Niners are a year away and most of all a quarterback away. Every time that you saw their playmakers catch the ball and um actually get an opportunity, they looked really good. They have the best yak uh yards after catch receivers. And running backs in the league. McCaffrey had one of the best runs we're going to see in NFL playoff history. Uh, just straight heart, wheel, and skills. 
uh, to get it in the end zone there, but it just wasn't enough without a quarterback. What do you think they do? I'm hearing that John Lynch just said, he said a, a statement that had a trouble people who like Trey Lance. He said, um, Brock Purdy hasn't been hurt. Trey Lance has to learn how to stay healthy. And that was surprising to me because they're both dealing with their first injury. So um, it seems like that Lynch and those guys are going to be leaning toward Purdy. And I'd be interested to see if they trade Lance. What do you think going forward for the quarterback position in San Francisco? I think one of the main reasons the Philadelphia Eagles are back in the Super Bowl is they didn't, they realized they had made a mistake in Carson Wentz and they didn't keep yeah. trying to push through and be stubborn. For, might be the same deal for the 49ers. And I know that you love Trey Lance's potential, but at a certain point, he's going to have to put it on the field. Uh, we've also seen it with other teams. You can't do development and push for the Super Bowl at the same time. So maybe they say, hey, you know, we thought this was the guy. Uh, but the future's right now. Uh, all our weapons are a little older. I don't know if we have time to develop him. So I wouldn't be surprised if they moved on from him. So you, do you expect them to resign Jimmy G and go with Jimmy no, G? No, they Purdy? said yesterday Jimmy G's not going to come back. Okay, so that's already said and done. So does Purdy, will Purdy relegate to a backup role and they roll with Lance? I think they'll try to bring in a veteran. And if they can't, then they'll just roll with Purdy. Okay. Okay. So Lance is on the market. Um, I heard that Demeco Ryan's has a good relationship with him, and kudos to the Houston Texans. Great PR save by Cal McNair. He he made Houston really proud, uh, and that had to be a high from up top because, as you know, Casario has no um, type of connection to Demeco Ryan's. That was all from up top with Cal McNair, and uh, him bringing in Demeco Ryan's is going to get that uh, Texas team fast started really you know well on uh saving and changing that uh franchise and um i think that trey lance is a he could be a houston texan you know mm, uh, interesting interesting and i would not if they end up missing out on bryce young or cj stroud i would definitely uh if i was them try to you know think about trying to trade for lance i think the lance fits what Demeco Ryan's is going to be trying to do really well with the fact that He's one of those quarterbacks that's athletic and accurate. Uh, he can scramble and uh, turn plays that should be losses into yards, and you need that when you're a defensive first team. Uh, I think they're going to concentrate on running Damon Pierce a lot, and we're going to see um, them kind of morph into what we see with the Niners over there uh, under Ryans as the, as the coach for the Texans. Okay, and what about the second game? We had a classic between the Bengals uh, and the Chiefs again. Yeah, we'll get to more of that and, and kick the damn extra point. But uh, it's going to be a great rivalry for, for both these teams moving forward. And I wouldn't be surprised to see these two quarterbacks and Josh Allen just give us classics for the next 10 years. So um, some decisions made by the Bengals uh, that I didn't agree with. Uh, but yet you got to give the Chiefs credit. Patrick Mahomes out there playing hobbled, uh, gets it done. Chiefs defense looked excellent. How much of that is the terrible Cincinnati Bengals offensive line? And it's not their fault. They were all backups. Um, and how much of it is just the Chiefs defensive line is good, and we'll find out against arguably the best defensive line in the NFL uh, in two weeks here, the Philadelphia Eagles. So a uh, great win for the Chiefs and uh, another exciting game. I mean, I think these guys are going to be doing it year after year. Yeah, I was able to hedge. As you know, I got a little down to get back my investment uh, when the line first came out when it was um, uh, Chiefs plus one even money. But then I was able to jump in late. Um, when uh, Burrow had the ball and they were driving uh, to uh, take the lead in the game when it was tied and they had the ball with less than two minutes, I was able to get the Chiefs for plus 400. So that was a good one. And I was able to make a profit on everything with that hedge. Overall, only thing that I can say about that game is this. Patrick Mahomes is unbelievable. He's <laughs> If he doesn't have that, that fumble that happens off him losing the ball and dropping it, that game would have never even been close. Um, Burrow had every opportunity at the end of the game to win the game still after all of that, and he couldn't get it done. And once again, Mahomes does get it done. Um, great scramble on the last play of the game. Uh, even with the hurt ankle, he was able to wheel himself into, you know, getting that first down. And uh, just an unfortunate play by the kid for Cincinnati. He lost, uh, you know, he, he didn't understand where he was at on the field, you know, just a, a momentary, you know, mistake. And it cost him, and they won't be seeing the Super Bowl again because of that, because it was the right call because he was clearly out of bounds. He was two or three steps into the white. So 
they're going to call that every time, all day for every quarterback, and especially for Patrick Mahomes. Um, great matchup coming up. We got two completely different styles of teams, and it's going to be a very, very fun matchup. Yep, can't wait. And of course, we'll be breaking that down more next week. We Let's gotta, get we to gotta, the present, man. We got a guest, oh, one of the greatest friends of the show, the mayor of Philly. What's going on, brother? We welcome in Alex Noops Christensen, host of the Brown Bag Bits. What's going on, brother? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Excited to talk a little Super Bowl with you guys. I know that a lot of times I'm on here, we talk NBA, but today a little football. And it's actually my mom's birthday on Sunday. I'm going to take her to Madison oh. Square Garden. We're going to go watch the Sixers, hopefully beat up on them Knickerbockers. That's right. You tell Miss Christian that I said hello, and you tell her that I said a happy birthday. That's nice. Both of you guys, mom's birthdays just passed. And uh, Spray was saying his mom's birthday was yesterday. So uh, happy birthday to Mama Spread us there, too. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Well, it's a great time for uh, both Alex and I. And hey, um, don't know if we'll let you off that easy. We might have to coax a little NBA talk out of you as well. Yeah, just I'll a little be, bit. I'll be ready. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Fred, what we got? All right. The first thing that we want to talk about, let's talk about your player props that you're looking at uh, on the Super Bowl already. We know that this is, it's a fun, it's a weird market, right? It just develops out of nowhere. It's like one time a year. And it's all these things that, that we're not necessarily used to. Uh, but but looking at the list, right? It seems like you've gone for the actual game-related stuff, right? You're not giving me, uh, you know, what color will Rihanna's bra be or, you know, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. So uh, what do you got first? What props are you looking forward to betting on the Super Bowl? That's why it's the Super Bowl. It has nothing to do with the actual game. It's the best betting menu of the year. It's like going to the Cheesecake Factory with that 50-page menu you got to flip through forever. So, I mean, <laughs> we got most of that stuff open now. I mean, all that stuff. Ask me next week. You know, we got to get uh, inside info on the practice people uh, so we can learn goofy stuff. Like, I forget who it was last year told me that Snoop Dogg was going to wear white shoes with yellow laces. Go ahead and watch the video, folks. White sneakers with yellow laces. So um, you'll have a lot more of that stuff come out. But um, the first prop I'll talk about, Super Bowl MVP is great. It's really fun to pick it. It's a good way, I think, to get some value on these teams as opposed to betting the money line. Um, but this seems like a great year for me to go against the QB. I'm looking at here, basically, um, a couple books have a market, you know, to win the Super Bowl MVP, you get a quarterback at like minus 385, which again, they're the dead nuts favorite. That makes sense. But anybody who's not a quarterback, I'm looking at plus 270 right now and you start to look at both of these teams. I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles, the way they profile, Jalen Hurts has played a couple really good games, but doesn't put up those eye-popping numbers. And, you know, generally you've got stuff like you start to look down the roster. I mean, what are the chances that Hurts has a good game but throws two touchdowns to A.J. Brown who has 150 yards or two touchdowns to Devontae Smith who has 150 yards? What if Miles Sanders gets another couple touchdowns this week? You get all those guys. What if Hassan Reddick does what he did last week, forces two turnovers, almost a third? I mean, so you get all those players on the Chiefs' side of the ball. I mean, it is probably Mahomes. That's where this becomes maybe a little bit less appealing, but we still get Kelsey in there. We get all the defensive players, any of the running backs, any of those random wide receivers. So that'll be the first one I'll start off with. I'll give you the Super Bowl MVP, any player but a quarterback at plus 270. And then another prop that I bet every single Super Bowl. Um, this is a strange game. All these guys have played football their entire lives are used to a certain rhythm. You play football every week, you get through, you've got your warm ups, you hear the national anthem real quick, and then you get out there and play football. This is not the Super Bowl. They have a break for a week. So a little bit of rust coming off basically a bye. The start time for this game is a strange start time. They don't normally play football. And the time between warm ups and the actual start of the game is longer. There's the national anthem. They sing another extra couple songs in there. Um, sometimes they have a little performance. There's all sorts of talk. So you get these guys, they come into a strange rhythm. And, you know, a couple Super Bowls, we've seen some high scoring first quarters, but a lot of zero zeros. A lot of first quarters of that touchdown. So I always attack this a handful of ways. And I'll start with um, under one touchdown in the first quarter plus 140. So zero touchdowns, you cash. One touchdown, you push. And then they offer you um, a couple books. And this is a little bit slow to, to roll out so far. But basically no score in the first 
five minutes, 30 seconds, six minutes, 30 seconds, seven minutes, 30 seconds, etc. I stack all those up. You know, the first one, again, no score in the first six minutes and 30 seconds. That means no score in the first half of the first quarter. That's even money. 730 gets you up to plus 160, 830 up to plus 200, so on and so forth. So, um, again, give me no QB for the MVP, basically, and then for the game to start slowly. I know that that's not something we see every year, but, again, more time than not, you get these guys out of your rhythm and things pick up in the second half. Yeah, and you know what? I usually roll with you on that. You know, we bet that last year, Noobs, and many years before. This year, I'm going to be on the other side of that. I think that both teams um, to score in the first quarter is at a great value at plus. I'm seeing plus 130 some places. Now it's went down to plus 115 in Vegas. The only reason why is because both these teams, they start fast, and they have the type of coaches that are really, really into prep. They're really into scripting those first 15 plays. And you know, as an Eagles fan right there in Philly, have watched every game this season, how quickly the Eagles get to work. They always score in the first quarter. They're one of the teams that lead the league in scoring. I think they're fourth place in the uh, first quarter scores. And uh, the Chiefs are right behind them um, with, uh, in fifth place. Patrick Mahomes has struggled, guys, in the past two Super Bowl. He hasn't done the super numbers that he usually does. I think that he's going to be on his Steph Curry this year. You know, Curry came in kind of focused in the finals and about getting the MVP. I think that he's going to start fast. And more than that, maybe we both can win and we get no touchdown and we get two field goals from both of these teams because we have two of the better kickers in the NFL. And both of them have big legs and we're on the inside in a, in a dome situation at Arizona. You got a bucker had the longest kick of the season, the 62. I know it can go probably 65 in Arizona uh, at that field. And Jake Elliott, you guys, kicker is really good, man. And he's especially good from distance. He's five for six from 50 yards. So I'm going to go just a little bit on the other side of you, but hoping we can both land in the middle and win. And I'm going to go with both teams scoring in the first quarter. Maybe we get a three to three in the first quarter, and then we get that at a great value with plus 125. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And again, like I said, it's just something I kind of roll out every year because that's the angle. But this is a year where I'm maybe a little less confident. Like you said, the Eagles have been a first quarter, first half team all season. The yeah. Chiefs have been able to start really quickly. I mean, we know how great Andy Reid is with that extra time. So, yeah, I like that. We'll go 3-3 three, three first quarter. Maybe I'll find a 3-3 three, three exact. Score. Yeah, let's get a 3-3 three, three exact, though. And let's, let's, let's hammer it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'll find that. I think that's it right now just for Super Bowl props. Again, there's a lot of stuff lying out here. You know, one of the things that, again, I'm, I'm waiting on, um, I love betting on the time for the anthem. We'll start to see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. We'll start to get some times and replays. But in terms of the game, I, I think I'm going to be looking at probably turnover overs. Um, mm -hmm. Both of these teams, again, like you said, the, the Chiefs have really been flat the last couple of weeks. They've got just nobody at the wide receiver position. No. That, that running backfield is really messed up. So we're we'll probably try to find some ways to target maybe like – just maybe a little bit of a sloppier game. So something like maybe Mahomes rush yards over. Maybe he gets a couple weeks, the ankle's healthy. He's running a lot more than he expects with some of the you know pass rush the Eagles are going to get. And uh, Both of he these will defenses be. do turn the ball over. So I'll probably look for something like that. Maybe play a defense or special teams touchdown, something like that. Okay, I got a couple more that I'm going to give out for the people early, but why they can still get the number. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, – Mahomes passer rating over 99.9. .9. The reason why is Mahomes' career postseason passing rating, guys, is, is 106. <laughs> His last uh, two postseasons, it's an insane 114. He's just a master at making, you know, the tough look really easy. He's one of those guys that makes the great throws, but he never misses the layups. You know, I, some, you know, you got some quarterbacks, they can make these most miraculous plays, but then you run a 10 and out and they're selling it over the guy's head. He doesn't miss any of those layups like that. If a guy's open, he's going to put it on him. He also extends plays. And with all that, he's still very careful with the ball. He has uh, no interceptions this year in the playoffs. So um, I think with his security blanket, Kelsey, you know, and all of that, I think that he still um, is able to go for 100 like he's done all of his career in the playoffs. So we get that at a minus 110. Also, I like Pacheco to go under 50 yards rushing. Um, I like this one a lot. Yeah, I, I, the Eagles are a very aggressive defense, so we know that the problems that they had in the couple of games they gave up points, it was due to the pass when they faced Aaron Rodgers and Dak Prescott. So I think that the – and we also know the Chiefs are just a pass-first team anyway. So I don't see Pacheco getting enough opportunities actually to go over 50 yards unless he breaks a long one, which I doubt against that Eagles defense. So um, he'll be sharing the ball with Jarek McKinney, Ronald Jones. They're going to get some work. So we're going to go Pacheco under 50 yards. I think he has a lot more 
uh, effect on the game in the, in the receiving yards with passing and stuff like that. And you got to go with over live, but Travis Kelsey over six and a half receptions. I mean, <laughs> it's like we could almost uh, uh, we could put the CIA out there and they couldn't stop Travis Kelsey <laughs> from getting <laughs> from getting seven catches. Man, it's just they wrote uh, the way that they draw up that offense. It's beautiful, and they always get him where he's uncovered. And when he's uncovered, now he can just run that quick little stop, and he gets a ball for five yards, makes one move on the linebacker, and it's a first down. And they're famous for that. Like I said, the Chiefs' extended running game is really just passes, short passes to Kelsey. So I think he flies over six and a half. He's averaged uh, eight receptions in the last five games, guys. So, you know, I, I really expect uh, Kelsey to have a big game. As you guys know, he's very competitive. His brother's going to be on the other side. And I'm sure we're going to get the best out of him. So I go with over loud, but Travis Kelsey over six and a half receptions as well. Yeah, it's hard to oh, argue like against this. Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ever. Look, he's minus 165 to score a touchdown. That's unbelievable juice. That's crazy. Jesus. Yeah, so That's... we'll see how that goes. It's going to be a great game. I know that. What do you guys got for the NBA today, Noobs? I thought maybe we talked just a little bit about futures here. I mean, a um, couple games tonight, if you want to hear about them quickly. I've got two overplays in the association. And just yeah, let's hear news for one of them. Um, let me just double check and see what the numbers are at this point. But, yeah, first up, the Cleveland Cavaliers playing the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, this number just got pulled down quickly. I'm sure it'll pop back up. Is it because like Jaron Jackson Bain. just went doubtful? Yeah, Jaron Jackson Jr. out. Looks like Desmond Bain. And you bet the over already? Yeah. That's the that's the injury news you want then, right? Get Jackson it out is. of it. Yeah, <laughs> no blocks. <laughs> that's what I mean. And, and the number, the total hasn't moved. The spread's moved a little is bit. Is Mitchell better, though? Memphis. Mitchell hasn't looked um, right, man. Mitchell hasn't looked right lately, right? He hasn't looked. No, he rushed I back mean, he's not scoring point. 50 points, but, you know, he's he's doing okay. And the total's just a measly 223, 223 and a half. Yeah, that's right. Um, Ran my numbers here, got closer to 228, 229. So going to take the over there. And it's it's tough, right? They're two pretty solid defensive teams. But I like the matchup here. And with Bain in to stretch the floor out a little bit, that looks nice. And then the other over I played, um, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks went from being a dead nut under team last year to this year being a great over team. Um, we were joking a little bit about before the show. Uh, that team does not play a lick of defense at this point. There is, you know, no. Jalen Brunson left during the offseason. They lose Maxi Kleba pretty early on, and uh, the defense has never really recovered here. Um, I would prefer, obviously, Zion be playing. He's still out for the Pelicans, but they've got Brandon Ingram. They've got Jonas Valanciunas. That's plenty of offensive talent tonight. And again, that total is also 223 and a half. Had that closer to, honestly, 227. So two overs for me there in the NBA tonight. And I'll just simply ask you guys, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Tell me why my Sixers aren't going to win the championship because I'm pretty much there. I'm ready to get hurt. <laughs> it's going to happen. Joel and beat. I'm already starting to order my own Larry O'Brien trophy when when they finally win. I mean, the Sixers to me have looked absolutely fantastic. I'm pulling up their numbers here quickly to win the title, but um, it just seems like everything's sort of coming together. They're 11-1 to win the title. Talk me out of it. I like that a lot, Noobs. I mean – you go through the East, they can beat the Celtics because at the end of the day, we know Al Horford cannot check and beat, and they're going to have to double and as long as Maxi and Harden uh, and Melton are doing what they've been doing so far. You guys will be okay uh, with that matchup. Uh, now you got the Bucks, so uh, that's where you know things get a little tight because the the Bucks do play really good defense against Embiid, but Embiid's that guy, man. And, uh, coach just said as long as he doesn't be a lap dog, he's gonna be okay because we know just as we saw, you know, guys know how I feel about Embiid. I've been, you know, crying about Jokers getting an MVP every year and them not giving it to him one of those years, the last two seasons. And we see when they match up, uh, especially the last one, Embiid has a different type of competitive spirit that he can raise his levels to. And if he plays like that in the playoffs, um, it's going to be hard to beat the Sixers. All you need Harden to do is continue what he's doing now, and that's being, um, you know, a coach on the court, a point guard. If as long as he's not having to make the big shots, you guys are going to be okay. Give it to Embiid and let him do his thing. Just got to keep that Harden hamstring healthy, spread. Oh, I'm actually more worried about Embiid's health. I think they can absorb an injury to, to Harden a little easier. You, you oh, move yeah. Maxi in there. You have Maxi and Melton back there. Uh, Melton's been a huge pickup. 
Uh, I don't know yeah. whether to credit Memphis for just rolling along without him or to be like, why'd you give up on this guy, right? But, uh, uh, you know, when you guys – He was a him, Rocket. The Rockets yeah. drafted him. Yeah, well, I mean, half the team's Rockets, right? Oh, Daryl Murray. Always. 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 Right, always. right now. Uh, yeah. My concern, of course, is that Embiid's <laughs> never been able to hold up uh, for the whole thing, right? He's always had issues uh, at some point being injured in the playoffs. And my final thing about him is his fourth quarter numbers aren't always the best. Uh, you know, I still worry about his conditioning, and I think that's hand in hand with the condi- uh, the injuries. The fact that he <laughs> it's tough to work out and stay in shape when you're constantly resting your ankles or your knees. So uh, I think you have a great bet there at eleven to one. You, you, you know, it's going to be hard to talk me out of it. I think they match up really well with Boston, uh, who of course is the top dog in the East right now. Um, but that's the one, right? And, and you know, Horford, you know, you said Horford, he actually has done pretty well against Embiid. I think if I were to choose anyone to cover him, it might be Horford. He's the best, but no one can stop him. Like, if you well, go single coverage. Whenever we do the, the breakdowns on the NBA rundown, they go, well, NBA's going to go off. And I go, well, he's going to go off every night. There's no yeah. team yeah. that you're going to choose where you're going to be like, this is a bad match. Nobody. Right? Nobody. Turner, one of the best defensive centers in the NBA. He crushes them every time. I mean, <laughs> way too strong for him. Way yeah. too strong for him. So, yeah, he's too um, strong for him. It really, it just comes down to health and then being able to get it done in, in the clutch. So, so we haven't seen it. But if we're healthy, if they're healthy, I mean, you're going to have a great shot there. And I think that number is way too high. And I think it's basically related to a lot of people who are like me and they're afraid to place the bet because they just don't think that, hey, what we're seeing right now is what we're going to see in May. So let's see how he holds up. And then, of course, you know, what's the other thing that you're going to say against Philly? Your coaching situation, right? Yeah. Even against Bud, who Budenholzer, whoever, I think it's bad rap for no reason. I don't think he's as bad as people say. Uh, he's going to have a coaching disadvantage in every single matchup, right? And, and the Heat are coming along. You're going to have to go against Spo. I mean, is this Celtics new coach good? I don't know. It's tough, right? I mean, Luke Walton looked great with that Warriors roster, right? So uh, uh, if the Celtics are going to miss, their coach. They're going to miss him because the thing that you talked about, the success they were having with Horford was all defensive design. It was the way that they were able to, the way that they bring the backside help uh, with Tatum. You know, people forget because how Tatum can score that he's 16. He's a center, you know? Yeah. So when he's coming on the backside with those long arms and, and beats spinning into him, he has to get off the ball. So I don't think Horford more was shaking the one-on-one, but that was all um, great defensive designs by their former coaches you guys know who hangs his hat on the defensive side as far as in doc like you said docs the guys passed him a little bit but doc is really good at managing egos he's good about keeping guys feeling good about themselves and keeping the upbeat locker room and he's also good at out of bounds and uh plays and stuff like that drawing up plays so he'll be all right it's just like you say in game he does struggle <laughs> I mean, again, I'm excited. This is as good as the Sixers have been in a long, long time. They've got a great chance. And honestly, I think we're just going to see an MVP conf- uh, NBA Finals at this point. It's going to be Embiid versus Jokic because you look at the Western Conference and uh, Denver is the only team to me that inspires any sort of confidence. I mean, any to Memphis, anyone. Memphis is probably needs another year. That's probably next year for Memphis. I don't know if this is their season, but it's the Nuggets and nobody else is close. Nobody close. So you know who's on the trail, though. If the Timberwolves keep building up that team and they can get off a cat and trade them to somebody and, and get some nice veterans back to go around, Ant-Man, Ant-Man's going to be a real problem. With As you see, we've talked about this so many times, Fred, how I always was saying, man, they need to get rid of cat. They got to let this kid. It's a wing league. He's a perfect leader, ex-quarterback. You see how the guys play for him. They love him. They gravitate to him. It's time for Minnesota to get off cat. They got the right guy. They got one of those guys who's a first-team all-pro. Every year, he's that type of player, man. And um, that's who's on the come up, the, the, the T Wolves. But I definitely agree with you, man. The Warriors, they don't, they don't, don't seem to count out the Warriors. I, 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 they don't play defense, Fred. Fred, you guys hit right lightning now, in a bottle when last when year. You have, when you have four rings, it's hard to get up in February. Because you know it just doesn't matter. But last year they weren't expected to win. That just happened. Know, they got they hot at the right, right time. This isn't the this isn't the old Warriors. Like your mentality is saying that because they won last year. But yeah. what they did, this is the same type of NBA this year. Anybody can win right now if they get hot. So I agree with you. They could get up. But last year, don't think like last year was like, 
oh, we're the Warriors. Let us warriors put our flag in the ground. When we want to turn it on, we can't. No, no. I'm, not, I'm just saying, don't just think the Denver's going to cakewalk to the finals. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily trust that team. I know they're looking better. Clippers. Watch the Clippers. Yeah, watch the Clippers. Another watch the Clippers. Yeah. Watch the Clippers. Kawhi Leonard is throwing up thirties like they <laughs> like they're nothing. You know, he's back to playing robot ball. You know how he gets when he gets robotic, and you can't stop him because yeah. he has those moves that he's doing cone drills against you. And it's t each time he's going to be able to score. So watch them because you know how great Paul George is in the playoffs. You know how Leonard his his past playoff performances. A better coach than Ty Lue. You know, Ty Lue yeah. was helping Doc a lot. You know, so. We'll see how yeah, it goes. This is up for grabs. I'd like to see the Nuggets make it. I'm just saying, you know, this happens. You know, we kind of overlook these Warriors teams, and eh, they're, not, they're not looking too good. They just, to me, they can just flip that switch, right? And uh, Jokic was only missing his guy. You out know Murray's the closer, and now they got Michael Porter, and Michael Porter's lights out when it comes to catching shoot. But as you always say, Spread, can you leave him in for defense? They're gonna have it to do. So the Denver strategy has been to let Porter get the lead and then close with Bruce Brown. And, yeah. And I actually think that's a pr pretty good method. That's smart. And, Very and smart. He's young enough to where it's not causing problems, although I do watch a lot. I just see him cut to the bench. Sometimes he looks pretty pissed when he's sitting out there in the fourth quarter, but, hey, you got to earn those minutes. So uh, I think this is this is great. I think one thing that's happening in the NBA, and, and Noops, we talked about it a little bit beforehand, I think just the overall talent level of the league is so high that it's yeah. getting to be more like the NFL where there's more parity, right? Yep. And, of course, the Warriors had that super team that we all expected for years and years. Um, but I think it's going to be harder to just pencil in teams, you know, year after year to make the finals. And I, for one, think it's great. It makes the regular season matter more, even though, the you know, the injury reports don't seem to, to indicate that. But I think there's a good – you can make arguments for eight teams this year. They have a real yeah. shot to win the championship, and I can't remember. The even Lakers the even have a chance. Like <laughs> no, they they do. do, and I hate yeah, they do. Lakers. No, they, they do. Lakers. Look at their roster. They do, noobs. Yes, they do. Look at their After roster. They, they don't. They <laughs> added Hachimura, and they're not finished dealing. They're going to get somebody else. LeBron and AD are two of the most dominant players still in the NBA, and if AD can get healthy enough, they have a chance, man. They do, oh, unfortunately. Gonna, they do. <laughs> we're making fun of Joel and Bean and James Harden staying healthy, but Anthony Davis is going to be no! fine. <laughs> Mr. Boston would himself. He's going to be okay. What do they Mr. call him? Street clothes? Yeah. yeah it's, I, I get it. Like, peak LeBron, peak AD. If I, okay, if Hachi is going to go 8 for 12 from the field every game, sure. Maybe the Lakers have a chance, but I'm not as optimistic. I like that coach, man. I like I like him. I like him a lot. I he's think doing he a nice he's job. They're getting a lot yeah. of a team that should be, uh, I think, a lot worse than they actually are. And he found something positive to do with Russell Westbrook. The year is twenty twenty three. I'm not sure that any man on earth could think of something positive for Russell Westbrook to do. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, hats yeah. off to him. But yeah, unless they're moving those first round draft picks for somebody really good, oh, the cupboard is awfully bare. They're gonna need a lot of Austin Reeves in a playoff series. Sleeper in the East. You guys got me a little hype. I've been watching it lately. I'm back in, involved. Okay. The Wizards. They can upset somebody in the first round, right? I don't think so. I mean. I like the it, Wizards, man. It's still a lot of poor singers. I mean, Kuzma has been great. But Bradley Beal has taken a big step back this year. I mean, he they got to trade him or Kuzma. I see the body language. I don't think Bradley Beal's taking well that Kuzma's becoming the first option. Their coach is starting to realize after all those games that Beal was out that their offense runs better through Kuzma. Oh, and I don't I like think that Beal likes that. I've been betting the Wizards yeah. a lot without Bradley Beal. Me too. Um, Bradley Me too. Beal comes out, they adjust the line, maybe a point or two away from the Wizards, and I'm happy to wait and scoop up that value. So I like the yeah. Wizards maybe game yeah. to game, but <laughs> In a in a seven game playoff series, it's hard for me to see them beating any of the top four four times. I mean, you know, they're going to end up having to play Philadelphia, Boston, Brooklyn, um, or Milwaukee. Milwaukee, or Washington, even, Washington, yeah, yeah, four That's times. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I like your team too, spread. I like the Kings' chances. They have a chance. Don't think that they don't. They have a chance to get out be the some West. Playoff themes. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be some yeah, playoff games. I'll be interested to see. I think we're great, going to be great in the regular season. Let's see how the lack of experience uh, comes to Ruse. And really, it depends on our matchup there in the first you got, round. You got something that's very important. 
the problem you guys are gonna have some bonus is horrible against the other big men who can play. He he can't yeah. play any defense. He's just a, a great offensive player. But you have my guy Fox, and we know how Fox is. He's one of the most competitive guys. And when you need a basket, like how it gets in the playoffs, he's one of those guys that can go get a basket. So that's gonna help you guys a lot. And he got his boy Monk over there too now. So they got the Wildcats backcourt over there. Monk's been balling, man. Now, the Kings are funny, man. I know Spread's trying to play like he's not excited, but he told me about his story. He's, he's installing his own beam in his house. He's been yeah, up on nice, the roof. Nice. Nice. He's going to be lighting it up. We'll be excited. So, you know, if you're in the Sacramento area and you happen to see an actual beam, you, you might be able to figure out where Spread lives. Yeah, that's going to be me for sure. No, I mean, I am pretty excited. I wasn't sure what to make of this team, but, uh, you know, the Sabonis defensive issue was my main concern. And I don't know if it matters that much in the regular season. I think that doesn't really get exposed to the playoffs. But on a drought for so long that, that I'll take even, you know, a first-round exit. So uh, ha happy to see this team moving in the right direction. And, um, you know, you talk about tanking, and I think it does really hurt the players' mentalities, right? I mean, that's one of the unspoken things. Oh, well, you moved up three places in the draft. Yeah, but De'Aaron Fox was almost quitting, right? Ready to, you know, lost his. He was ready to get up out of there. Yeah, yeah, having to lose every <laughs> single night. So it, yeah. I think it's what we need, even if this is probably the best draft we've had in, <laughs> in like five years, probably since 2018. Uh, I, I'm happy to be uh, in the higher end of the standings. Yeah, you guys have a good coach too. What other uh, you have futures, right, Noops? Yeah, there are no uh, futures at this point that are interesting. Some of the award markets, but they're really starting to tighten up. I mean, maybe a little bit in value on Embiid here at plus 240 to win the MVP. It does feel like we're down to a two-guy race. Vanchero is going to win Rookie of the Year. That's it's By a landslide, yeah. yeah. Most improved player. I I'm still surprised to see Laurie Markin in the favorite there, but uh, well, I'm not going to back Shea. Be? Shea. I mean, he's been great, but I would actually – I would pick Shea. If I'm voting for most improved player, I'm, I'm picking Shea Gilgis Alexander. But, but isn't he kind of been – he's, would, yeah, he's always been man. good. Yeah, he's always been good. Marking he just had – he like was a hurt. He doing all-star, right? He was a throw-in in that trade. Yeah, I, yeah. He, he was not a throwaway in that trade. The Clippers really liked him, and I've always thought highly of SGA. I'm sorry, you're saying Markin was a throw -in. Yeah, Markin. Yeah, Markin, yeah. Uh, throw -in. No, the so, Clippers wish they still had SGA. Believe that. <laughs> So for me, it's always which is the harder jump to go from nobody to somebody or from somebody to a top 10, top 15 player. But haven't they always rewarded the nobody to somebody just like the coach of the year is well, usually the player? Last they year they gave it to John Morant. Last last year they gave credit to a guy who was okay. you know, an all-star, borderline all-star that all of a sudden is now like one of the eight to ten best guys in the league. So but, but I don't know if right? Shea made that same I don't know if Shea made that same year. year. If we took the last 10 years though, right? It's just like coach of the year is usually the team that outperforms their regular season win total by the most, right? So if you started at 50 on your regular season win total, you can't do it. And that's why, like, maybe Mike Brown's got a shot, right? Because uh, outperforming that win total. So yeah, we'll, we'll historically, see. that's kind of it. I mean, Giannis won most improved player one year, so you kind of got little stuff like that. But I, I'm more, I'm marking it makes sense. I would still give it to Shea. I think that's a tougher jump to make. And then defensive player of the year, hopefully Jaron Jackson Jr. holds out. I've got some real fat tickets there, but oh, nice. yeah, nothing yeah. else, nothing else in the futures market. I really like, so we'll see. Fingers crossed. I know spreads putting some stuff out later, so I'm sure he'll have some stuff for you guys to read about. Yeah. Don't, yeah. I did, I did take um, um, Claxton on that defensive player of the year, but my idea is if you're writing an article today on February 2nd, you can't give out Jaron Jackson in good faith. Right. I mean, you, you missed the number, you, you know, you missed the vote. Uh, you're going shopping the day after black Friday and all the TVs are normal priced again. Um, right. so, uh, that, that's why I chose Claxton. And, and my idea just behind that one was, when Durant comes back, the Nets were looking real good, right? If, if they make the run, they move up the standings, he could be uh, viable in their eyes. But at the same time, it's also going to take a downgrade in play from Jackson, I would think, because, um, you know, he, he's been good, and it's really hard to argue against him. I got a quick question for both of you guys before we let Noobs go. What do you guys think about, because you know I'm not really a totals guy, but this one stuck out to me. Does the uh, Heat and Knicks go under tonight? It's like 215 and a half or something, and I'm thinking under because I've heard that Thibodeau is really uh, stressing to the Knicks uh, this week about how they haven't been playing defense. They're 7-1 in games that they hold opponents, um, I think, under uh, 110 or something like that, and uh, then you know how the Heat play defense. And uh, the last couple of times that these guys have messed up, it's been old-school basketball, almost like the 90s where the 
the total has been like under 200. Do you think that it can get under 215? I have it right at 215, honestly. I have like 214 and a half is probably what I would make it. Now, I don't know if that means a whole lot because you know, a lot of people running models looking at numbers. There was this month of Knicks basketball where they were just yep. a revelation. And the month before that, they were kind of bad. A couple of weeks since then, they've been kind of bad. So um, I think that there's probably not the most efficient or the most correct number there. And if anything, it goes under. I wonder if you could even go find like an alt under, like just play like under 210 or something. Just take, you know, okay. anything out of the equation. But yeah, my numbers came out right pretty much on top of 215. But again, I don't know if people making these numbers especially running models have a great data set to work with for the knicks i have it at 219 and you spoke, spoke about the knicks and they're a tough one because they went over for about a month straight yep. right <laughs> it was just <laughs> there was a month where i think you know they were about 10 and 4 to the over um and, and so that that boosted it up a lot um uh, miami there of course is the wild card because they've really dialed down on defense so they're you know, and, and we could talk, we could do a whole show on this, right? Noobs, the, the waiting between the full season results and, and, and your your past month results or your past five games. You do the full season, it's going to tell you that the Miami Heat's going to go over. But you start sorting, like, since January 1st, they've been one of the best defenses in the league. So that's one where I project to the over, but I don't see myself getting to a play there just from watching the league and knowing – I don't. I don't actually manually adjust my numbers when I see the things like that. I just keep it in my head, and I go, "Hey, uh, this could be a skewed number, especially on the Heat side." So um, I'm fine staying away from that one, actually. Okay, hey Noobs, we really appreciate you coming on. We'll get you back on in a week or so, man. We got to talk some tennis, which I'm watching this match now. I just hit a uh, uh, AVU uh, first set against Garcia, so <laughs> that was a nice one right there. Yeah, plus two hundred, so that was a good one right there. I got her money line, so let's hopefully she can close shit out. Okay, yeah, she just went down. She got broken the second set. It's 3-0, but you know this one's going to go down to three sets. They always play three sets between those two, but she's looking good. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Looking forward to coming back. All right, All my right. brother. Catch you soon. My guy, Alex Noops Christensen. You guys catch him on Brown Bag Bets uh, every day on uh, YouTube and other uh, streaming sites. All right, future, right? Yeah, um, you know, uh, one and one. But when you got a plus 90, 900 and a plus 750, one and one, it's going <laughs> to pay the mortgage, <laughs> buy you some steak, and uh, yeah, uh, rolling around looking pretty nice uh, in, in your vehicle. So, uh, yes, sir. Had, of course, Cincinnati, um, they fell short. And I'm going to save mine a little bit before we kick the damn extra point on, on that yeah. one. But you had a great pick, and, and we talked about it earlier, right? And I was on the opposite side, and I had Coco. Uh, but Sabalenka uh, finally broke through, right? Hey, maybe this is Noob's year, right? You know, uh, his favorite yeah. tennis player, uh, she yeah. broke through. And she had the same questions around her than MB. Now, not as much as hell, yeah. but you watched the Mindset. Match, it looked like a different player in the semifinals. You're yeah. like, this isn't the player I bet on last round. Um, That's right. She was finally able to break through, and she did it against a player who put her to the test. Because Ryvikina yep. isn't going to melt down on you. No. Right? You no. have to beat her. And, you and that's what she did. This is huge for the women's game in my mind because, you know, I'm big on Ega, and I'm going to be back in Ega once they get over to these slower hard courts, right? I mean, this is a terrible surface for her. And, and on that clay swing, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she went undefeated. But, you know, moving into the summertime, Sabalenka has now established herself as, hey, I can threaten. I can be world number one, too. And, and hey, you know, maybe I'm underestimating her on clay because she's got the power to hit through people, even on the slow, slow rolling arrows. Um, so yeah. Great pick by you. Um, go through kind of what you saw, because all everything that I saw was just positive, impressive and great for the women's game. Because I, I, I personally like the women more than the men, because I don't like seeing the same three guys win every time. And it almost no. pisses me off when people go, oh, WTA sucks. And I'm like, why? Because no. the person doesn't win every no. time and you can't predict it? Is that, is that WTA why? WTA is wonderful. And the yeah. juice isn't all crazy like it is over there with all those guys, minus 700, minus 800. Yeah. You got to really bet the spread on tennis and men's tennis in order to win because you know it's going to be Djokovic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know he's going to win. And now I guess next will be another how was Medvedev since uh, Nadal's kind of falling off. But – yeah, we're WTA guys over here. You know, we love the sport. Um, WTA is just, um, it could teach the WNBA a lot. 
about marketing and, and, you know, how to do women's sports. I could tell you that much because WTA uh, is respected uh, along the same front as the ATP. They make the same money and everything, and it's because of the type of product that they put out there, and that's what the WNBA has to work on. As far as in Sabalinka, Sabs has been my girl, man. You know, I've been a fan of Sabs, man, at least six or seven years. When she first hit the scene, you remember she had that dominant – run on hard courts and they was like who is this young girl she has so much power she can you know hit the ball you know off the court i've been riding with her since she went through a little period of uh having problems serving as long as her serves correct no one's on hard court uh can really beat her she's one of the best you're going to see on hard court she has a lot of problems on clay because of course we know that um that's your girl uh Siantex. that's her that's her surface she's mastered it but hard courts, Sabalinka can beat her. And how the uh, tournaments work, it's more majors on different courts than, than just the clay. You just got the one clay, you got two hard courts. So that means Sabalinka has a great chance to win the U.S. Open um, as well. And she also can play on grass. Her game is really good for grass. So she could also win Wimbledon. So I expect Sabalinka to make a real run these next few years. I hope that she um, doesn't do like Sophia Keenan and, you know, let it go to her head and let the success of winning Australia make her uh, fall off her game. I hope that it ignites her and makes her focus more on tennis and uh, gives her some more belief in herself because that was the main thing that stuck out to me at AO was that she was very confident in herself. Um, she knew that she was the best girl on the court and she played like it. Uh, she has the most power we've seen since Steffi Graf, man. So I really enjoy watching her play and I hope that Sabs uh, continues to move forward in the future and continue to win us some money. I don't think we're going to see a Cannon situation. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Because, first of all, she's 10 times more talented. Cannon was a straight grinder, right? I mean, yep. she was the total, you know, I'm going to outwork my opponent, right? And so once you lost right. that, eh, you, you kind of lost it. Uh, she's more talented, and I also think she's a little more focused on the sport. So, right. Um, yeah. Hey, hey, big things for, for uh, her in the future. I'm sure you'll see us and back in her a lot. And I, so, really, what I want to see now. Is Indian Wells if she faces Ega there because I think that's right around a neutral, right? Because right, it's right. a hard court, but it's slow. Yeah, <laughs> Indian it is. Wells is so slow. That's going to yeah. give Ega the advantage there, right? That, that she didn't necessarily have in Australia. If Sabalenka can beat her there, hey, this is huge. Um, so I, I can't wait to see how this turns out. And I'll tell you one thing: I think this development made the tennis season um, that much more exciting. And I wouldn't be surprised to see these two women from the Australian Open in the finals of Wimbledon as well. So uh, nope. great things on the WTA, man. It, it just keeps getting more and more entertaining. And I can't believe more people don't watch it. Sometimes I sit there watching it like, how are the ratings for this not higher? But I, I'm so glad better. because it makes the market so good for us because it's a good market. Because that's yeah. the thing that hurts the NFL is too many people bidding. So it's a good market. Let's get to kick the damn extra point. I want to hear your rap, man. Spread has a couple words for Zach Taylor. I do. So here's the thing. Everyone said, oh, that poor kid that, that, that made the out-of-bounds penalty, right? You're the one who put him in that position, Zach Taylor. Hey, yeah. guess what? This isn't the kickoff. You can kick it out of bounds. There's less than a minute to go. Why would you risk having that as a special teams play? This is very easy. This is very simple. Anyone who played more than 20 games of John Madden football moves <laughs> the thing over and you kick it out of bounds. How yep. was he not instructed to kick out of bounds? And your bad decision cost us what could have been a classic, classic overtime with these new rules. These yep. kids could have gone back and forth like a college game, just putting up touchdown after touchdown after touchdown, right? And watch the score double in overtime. But because – you made, and this is a simple decision, right? And I hate second guessing coaches because obviously I can't drop plays like Zach Taylor. I can't run a, a football team like Zach Taylor. I don't know the intricacies of an offense like Zach Taylor, but I know in that situation, you kick the ball out of bounds. Zach Taylor, to me, yeah. I, I know you're great at play calling. Maybe you should be an offensive coordinator. Maybe you're Mike McCarthy 2.0 and you have one of the greatest quarterbacks that we've ever seen. And if your team did not draft him, you would not have a job as a head coach anymore. I'm really disappointed in Zach Taylor, and I feel bad for that kid Burrow. Man, I, I hope that I'm wrong. I hope he ends up being a great coach. Uh, but right now, I'm not impressed with what I've seen. He's carried, he's carried by his quarterback, and he's carried by his defensive coordinator. What does Zach Taylor do for that team where you say, oh, if he's gone, 
they're not going to be able to succeed. I think there's eight to 10 different play callers that can come in and succeed with Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, even P Ryan is become an effective second back. They have so many weapons on that team. I think almost anybody could draw plays for this. Zach Taylor, you kick the ball out of bounds, kick the damn extra point. Yeah, man, kick the damn extra point, Zach. And not only that, when they had the ball um, with the last position in the game, you got KC with two timeouts left. You got the ball with less than two minutes. After they got the first down with Hurst, he never ran the ball. He never ran the ball. He just kept so much time on the clock for KC. At that moment, you're supposed to use Joe Mixon. If anything, I tell him to kick the damn extra point for his usage of Mixon all year. You got to ride Mixon. You can't make everything about Burrow and the receivers, man. You have one of the better running backs in the league. Take advantage of him. So, as my boy said, kick the damn extra point. All right, man. Let's get to the ball and parlay today, man. What you got today, Sprint? Uh, I'm not let you do it. I'm actually still p- pumping in these numbers right now. I just got them all in. Let me see where my biggest edge is. But you go ahead and let everyone know that you're take what you're taking. Man, I'm going with the Lakers. The Lakers are picking up steam. They just uh, added Hachimura, who's a really solid player. Um, uh, Kuzma kind of played him out of his position in Wizards, but he was a really efficient player. What I like about Hachimura, he's one of those guys that only takes good shots, and when he takes them, it seems like he never misses, man. So. He's going to be a great piece to fill in uh, and be like a glue guy uh, for uh, uh, AD and for LeBron going forward. LeBron's playing the best basketball of his career, man, uh, as he's closing in on Kareem's record. Um, You got two teams that are just going in opposite uh, different directions. Even though that the uh, Lakers lost at Boston and against Brooklyn, Brooklyn, they didn't have their lineup in, and they gave Boston all they wanted. And we know Boston's one of the top teams uh, in the league. the the Lakers are really starting to you know turn the corner. And they're understanding now that they have to accumulate wins. They can't waste um, these opportunities. Um, you got a team in uh, the Pacers who've now lost um, nine of their last ten. You know we don't know if Halliburton's going to be back or not. They're missing him right now because they have to go uh, with someone who doesn't have the size, doesn't have the height, doesn't have the ability uh, to play his style of ball, man. So. Uh, I'm going to roll with the Lakers. I believe that they're able to get the victory uh, tonight in Indiana. I think the Pacers remain cold. And as you know uh, about LeBron's past history uh, in Indiana, he still likes to go there. I think the Lakers uh, are able to to win minus two and on the money line minus 130. So I'll be with the Lakers tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue with that one. You talked about missing Halliburton. The uh, Pacers are one and ten since he's left the lineup. Uh, yeah. Over their last nine, one and eight against the spread. So not only are they losing straight up, but they're catching points a lot of times and they're not covering it. Um, I wonder if this is by design. I know they were intending to tank this year. And like you said, yeah. hey, maybe it's playing a little safe. What's the point of just getting throttled in the first round? Right. You're going to get throttled by Boston, Philadelphia, Milwaukee. Yeah. Whoever you match up with. Yeah. And, and we talked about it. And, and you, you watch college. So, hey, I know everyone's talking about Scoot and Victor. This is a deep draft. Yeah. I've heard before from from guys that that read that, hey, there's six guys that might have gone ahead of Paolo last year. It's some guys. It's some guys coming out. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, even if you're not landing in that top spot, you have a chance to land an impact player. Um, I'm doing the same thing going over these numbers. You're fading a team. Uh, that's one in ten over their last eleven. Why don't I fade the team that's lost nine straight? The New Orleans, right? <laughs> right? Uh, New Orleans Pelicans <laughs> have been struggling. Uh, we know how much Zion r- really means to that team, and they put a great team around him. But you know, he's like the quarterback. You know, you're missing that piece. It's not happening. I think Brandon Ingram rushed back. I think yeah. I don't think he was fully healthy. He hasn't. He's been shooting less than forty percent, not from three, from the field in the three games back before so yeah. far. And this team really, uh, without Zion in the lineup, they just don't have that versatile th- th- dynamism uh, that led them to here early in the year. Um, hey, you know, can they get it going? Yes, they can. But who are they playing tonight? The Dallas Mavericks, uh, a team that I guess I'm higher on than everyone else. Uh, but this yeah. team's been excellent at home. Uh, Dallas's stats at home are so much better than on the road. They remind me of the Warriors' home road splits this year. Uh, let me pull it up real quick just so I make sure I'm giving you guys the right number. 18 and 9 straight up at home this year. And yep. uh, so this team is a team that when they're at home, 
they get the win, and I just don't trust the Pelicans right now. So let's do what we can do in the NBA and let's fade these streaks, and eventually the Pacers will turn around. Eventually the Pelicans will turn around, but let's make some money until they do. Uh, so you like the Lakers uh, to beat the struggling Pacers, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Mavericks to cover against the struggling Pelicans. Yeah, the Pelicans have been struggling. I, I saw the other night, you know, I'm big into watching body language and how guys are, you know, uh, kind of interacting with each other because it tells a lot about the temperature of the team. Uh, Brandon Ingram made a bad play um, in the fourth quarter, and I saw how Zion's face looked. So I'm uh, thinking that they're losing a little bit of confidence in him. Like you said, I don't know if he rushed back or what, but he doesn't look anything like the player he was last year. So, um, guys, we, we're rolling up on the Super Bowl. After next week when we do our Thursday show, we'll be back with you guys that following Monday doing a daily show, giving you guys a quick 15 minutes about uh, our basketball picks for the day. Get it real quick, uh, short and sweet to you guys so you guys can get to the winners. I know that's what you guys tune in for. Today was an information show. Uh, we appreciate Noops for coming on. Hope you guys got those props and you can lock those in. Once again, you guys support. Got the cap coming out live from Sumlin and other uh, Waging World merch is going to soon be under the YouTube page where you guys can order and you can support the show. Please like the show. Uh, it helps with our algorithms. As I always say, we don't get paid for the show. We do it because we really just enjoy talking with you guys. Anything for the people spread before we get out of here? Man, uh, I'm excited. This is this is a weird week, right? What are you doing on Sunday? Oh, man. It's Probably like, just it's the, like the I feel like I have an extra day. It's like um, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my week has an extra day in it now. Uh, the kids, the kids. I'm probably just going to do something. I, I'll probably go to uh, Utah. I might go to Utah, um, go to a beach out there. We really like Hurricane. It's a real yeah, nice beach. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, man. You got red rocks and water. So maybe we go out there and, you know, uh, try to do a little hiking or something around the mountains, around that beach or something. Do something like that. We're going to definitely get outside and enjoy some of this weather because, you know, football has kept us in the house the last four months <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to, to have the sundays back uh probably gonna get out same with you i'll probably try and be a little more active unless we get rain um but uh hey you know we got this weekend off and then we got to really gear up and, and grind it out next week and then with we, all our uh, focus switches to basketball but we'll give you guys our super bowl picks and complete breakdowns next week as always, follow my guy Spread at Spread of Stair. Follow me at 5 Star in Vegas. Spell out the 5. We'll talk to you guys soon. Best of luck to you all.